Well, the, it's it sort of, you have to, they say sort of, I think they set a target or something. And the targets they're set ensure that pupils at Eleanor Palmer Primary School in North London achieve above average results in maths. Over four programmes, we're looking at how they teach mathematics across Key Stage 2. My favourite document of the last 10 years is the Numeracy Strategy, and I really regret its passing, and I'm, and I'm getting to know the new math strategy, and I'm sure I will come to love it. But that, more than any other document, has been fantastic, and with all my years' experience, it's the one thing, I think, that still lives in my office at home from the whole national curriculum. It's user-friendly, it's clear, and the sections five and six can be a lesson starter plan. Um, so I think that's a terrific document, and I would expect all my teachers to treasure it in the same way that I do. What would my first jump be, Ava? Um, you could jump to 200, if, if you wanted to jump to this 240. This is year six so with their teacher, up. Louise Wikes. The lesson is about different ways of doing better. subtraction. Jump 300. Jump 300. Whoop! 60. Plus 60, I'm going to jump to 300 and then I'm going to go whoop what am I going to jump to next what I'm going to jump to next Ella 400 okay I'm going to add 100 on I'm going to get to 400 Stefan 10 10 more makes me 110 410 and no prizes is for guessing that we jump at the end Shannon two good lad it can be quite difficult when you get into year six with subtraction because they've learned different methods in different years and the children, again, are at so many different levels. So it's a case really of showing them the different ways and then them choosing the one they're most comfortable with. Now, where am I going to go next, Martha? Um, to 400. Louise then works through the same adding on method laid out in columns. So I'm going to add on 100 there. And then where, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? Daisy? 10. 10 more, which is going to take me to 410. All right. OK, 10 more. And then, of course, I'm going to go to 412. I'm going to add two more. I add them up, and what do I get? 175. OK, on your whiteboards, I want you to have a go at doing this method here. 659, subtract 438. Off you go, guys. The class then work on a subtraction sum using whichever method they prefer. So what would you add on to get to 300? Two and nine is 11. Oh yeah, I got two, yeah, I forgot. And then I took 600 to 650, which is 222. And then I took away one, because it's 59. A teaching assistant works with selected pupils. And you got and a grand total of? 229. Well done, Molly, that's excellent. This is a subtraction method involving negative numbers. To subtract seven, what do you get? Minus five. So here, I'm going to go minus five. All right? This is a rather novel method of subtraction. Ten, take away 30. Uh, Martha? Minus 20. Minus 20. Oh, so we get there, and we have minus 20. Now, what am I going to do next? If I've done that already, what's your common sense tell you that I'm going to do next? Ava? 400 take away 200. What's that ending up with? 400 take away 200? 200. 200, we know that. And then what I say to myself is I say, 200 subtract 20, subtract 5. What do I end up with, Dennis? 175. 175. Right, like this, if you know where we're at with that. Who likes that method? Yeah, I like it. Right, this one, I want you to do on your own. Right, is there anyone who needs a hand? Right, Ella. Right, you can come out, 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 come
Except mine is 70. Good lads. I've been ever so picky, aren't I? Mine is 70. Then I say zero. Yes. Take away what, Tad? 900. Oh, which it makes me... Minus 900. Minus 900. After that, Tad, I'm still coming to you. Uh, 6,000 minus 1,000. Oh, flip Subtract. it, flip it, flip it, flip it. I say 1,000 minus... 1,000 minus 6,000. And I end up with? Uh, minus 5,000. Tad, do you like this method? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> it's hard. I'm going to stop harassing Tad and go to somebody else. Ava, what do I say then? Then you say 2,000 <coughs> take away zero. Good. Why is that a good mistake? She's made a good mistake. Why is it a good mistake? She said 1,000. What do you think? It's actually 20,000. It's actually 20,000, isn't it? You've got the thousands <laughs> in there, but that's, you know, it's so easy to do, isn't it? So then we end up with 20,000 take away nothing, and we end up with 20. Then you need to do the final step is to combine all the negative subtotals. Five, the 5,000. OK. And you end up with? 50,000. 15,000. Uh, 15, 15, well done. 15,000. You then take away your 900, which ends up with, Jack? Uh, 15. Yeah, 15,000. Take away 900. Um, 14,100. Take away 70. 14,000 Take away 4? 14,026. 14,026. Did anyone else get that? Well done, guys. Now, Master Jack, Tavashi and Owen, you have got some problem solving over there. You are completely on your own. Off you go. Louise then lets her higher ability pupils break away to work on their own. The most able children, they, they really don't need to be there. That's why I sent them off earlier, because what they need to be doing really is problem solving. Because one of the great things about being in year six is that as you continue to teach maths, it gets so much more exciting with all the problem solving that they can then do. Just pretend F is one. While the higher ability pupils get on with subtraction problems, the teacher works with the rest of the class to remind them about the traditional method of subtraction. I'll pop my pen there. What do I do? What do I say next? Ten take away three. Ten take away three is seven. Okay. You're going over there, Cecily. We're going to work. With then the rest of the class go off to tackle their subtraction worksheet. It'd be lovely if we could have more than one for that one, and there's two solutions for that. Louise checks how the higher ability group are getting on. The teaching assistant helps out with the lower ability. Yeah, that's right, well done. Class teacher Louise also spends some time with a group who need a bit more help with the topic. What I'd like us to do, I'd like us to actually count back. So 3,000, you say 2,900, then you say 2,800, good. The main focus with Year 6 is continuing to just enjoy and teach maths. And again, with the children who are really secure with all those standard methods, to explore problem solving, to ex start to really get into and explore algebra, you know, to test ourselves, to shock and surprise ourselves, and to really um, go for that. And then for the children who, you know, aren't extremely comfortable with that, just to make sure that they leave primary school with a, a strong sense of self when it comes to maths, and that, and that they understand themselves as learners and that they know those, those standard written mess, they're quite quick mentally and that they've got confidence and they, they feel good about that. What's behind this purposeful and effective classroom teaching and learning? Yeah, I wouldn't want to give the impression that it's all just, you know, enthusiasm's ideas and going off the path. I mean, if I just list what we do in a more sort of obvious assessment sense, we do the optional SATs and I think they're important and they're good and they're all um, recorded on a sort of online progress toolkit that we use that's excellent. And on top of that, once a year, um, we sample specifically the ability to use and apply. This is year six again, and the head has set the class some number problems to solve using their calculators. Then she and the class teacher observe how each child is working. You've really got to get, I think your first job is to get rid of that one. You could add seven, 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 seven yeah. to eight. You could add seven, but that would give you an eight. Just try that one. Two times two. 
times two times two add two. What do you get? So you divided that by itself yeah. to get that special one. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. And such what are they looking for? Really, just about noticing what operations the children are doing. Is it more that they're still going for trial and error, which is fantastic in itself because you can pick up patterns there, or are they seeing certain properties of numbers and certain and certain calculations which would work for them? Is that is that coming to them more naturally? It's just it's just gold, really, being able to go around and watch them. So, yeah, good stuff. I'm looking for strategies. I mean. Not better or worse, these boys initially have been very methodical and started at zero. So I'm trying to encourage them to sort of dive around more and not be held back like that. So looking to see if they see patterns. So, for example, Stefan, what happens now if you change that first, if you take away the last two instead of add the last two? So I'm trying to get them to see if they see starting points and go on. Looking at how they collaborate and talk and if they use that as a decent way in. Um, how they cope with mistakes. Uh, do they ask for help? Uh, do they that use the adults? What that? Two plus two plus two plus, plus two, two times two. Look, that's much better, you see. Yeah. Now you're jumping around a bit. Come on, you can do it. Yeah. You've done it. They work really well. I did not get to them. After the sampling session, the head, class teacher and teaching assistant discuss each pupil's progress. Um, a real sense of confidence as well, especially from Natalie. Yeah, really yeah, growing really confidence. Grows. Yeah, really growing confidence. Um, I don't know if she's, if she's here, Natalie. Sort of she would have really emphasised the whole thing of it being a collective thing. She maybe would have depended more on her partner. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't have mattered who what she was. What was her comment? Did she oh. say anything? It was easier than I thought. You see? She never and this time last yeah. year, it was very hard and enjoyable with Stella. We wrote, Natalie found this quite challenging but worked hard. She and her partner were supported by a teacher. She benefited from adult guidance. The mm. reasoning, she's really getting much mm. better. She's much more independent. Mm. So and that adult, adult guidance is so often about confidence. I mean, Cross-referencing what we've seen today, using and applying with kind of levelling. Even in the last half term, some of them have moved up, I'd say. Yeah, Natalie. Natalie is absolutely, absolutely. Really, Natalie's really safe. I Natalie is, is absolutely... I mean, this lot are home and dry. Yeah. Absolutely, she's absolutely secure. Mm. I think this lot are fine. I think this is the focus for the next yeah. half term. Uh, that was them. Brilliant. See, so once they, that's why I'm not, you know... What's the secret of their success at Eleanor Palmer School? There's quite a culture of of sharing ideas and you're not sort of competitive with each other. And also it's great, especially in year three, I sort of feel that I can pick up things from year six and year five that I can adapt and change and it's, it's not just static in each year group. There's certain overarching themes, isn't there? The importance of games, the importance yeah. of fun, the importance of number sense, the importance of over-learning things um, so that the children are really confident with number so they can manipulate number. I think we've all got that idea. Yeah. And hopefully we spread, we pass on our enthusiasm mm. for maths to the children as well, through the way that we teach, through the way that we play games, we make it fun, we encourage them to talk and to be involved with us. Yeah, people do talk about it, don't they, and share mm. their ideas, but it's kind of, you do need somebody leading on it and with an idea of where to start with all those things. But the bottom line, is it not, <clears throat> is that they leave here with those basic methods secure. Yeah, yeah. And I think they do. Yeah.